everyone your girl Egons is back again with another video tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to learn how to create patterns cut and sew a beautiful layered skirt just like this cool right and by the way if you like my shirt and want to learn how to make one for yourself with your own measurement I'll be dropping a link below so that you can access the step-by-step -step video tutorial and as always don't forget to like, drop a comment, and subscribe to my channel. Now, let's get to the cutting table and start drafting patterns for our skirt. So to start drafting patterns for our layered skirt, we'll need our pattern making tools. We'll need our pen or pencil. We'll need our scissors for cutting the paper. We'll need our tape measure, our meter rule, our pattern master or the French curve and then we would need our scotch tape for sticking the patterns together then we will need our transparent tracing paper for tracing out our patterns and then we will need our plain sheet of paper for drafting the patterns and lastly we will need our skirt block now this skirt block is the foundation for creating different styles of skirts. I'm going to drop a link in this video so that you can go assess the video so that you can create your own skirt block. This is a customized skirt block. Then you can create your own skirt block with your own measurement as we'll be using these very often in creating different styles of skirts. So now that we've said that, if you have all your pattern making tools ready, then let's get started so the first thing we will do to start creating patterns for our layered skirt is to trace out the front and the back skirt block I've already traced out mine so this is the front and this is the back remember to include all your details like the darts and the hip line the waistline and remember to add your straight grain as well so now we are going to uh, determine how long we want our skirt to be you can either lengthen your skirt block or you can shorten your skirt block depending on how long you want your skirt to be so for mine I'm just going to lengthen it with about um, 5 cm So whatever value you added to the front to lengthen it, add the same thing to the back to lengthen it so that it will match on the side seam. Now the next thing we are going to do is to create the waistband. Now to create the waistband, we are just going to, you are going to determine how wide you want your waistband to be. Usually I use 5cm for my waistband, so I am going to measure from here from the waistline downwards I'm going to drop it 5 cm you can determine how wide you want yours to be it can be bigger or it can be smaller than 5 cm it really doesn't matter and then you use your French curve or your pattern master to just join your line nicely This is my center front and then you do exactly the same thing for the back side now to create our waistband you're just going to cut off this waistband all the way down to the end And then because for waistband, we do not have that on our waistband, so we are going to close the dart. So you're going to cut at the middle of the dart, the line at the dart, at the middle like this. And then we are going to close the dart because we want to remove this dart. So you're going to fold on this dart leg, just like this, to remove this dart. You fold it, place it on the other dart leg just like this and then you use your scotch tape 
to stick it down to hold it together in place and then we also have to take off this other that you do exactly the same thing for this one as well So the next thing you're going to do now is to redraw your your waistline because it's a little bit wonky on this part so we're going we're just going to redraw it nicely so this is our center front waist band so we're going to set this aside and then we are doing we're going to do exactly the same thing for the back side so now that we've created the uh, waistband the next thing we are going to do now is we want to eliminate these darts. We don't want that on this part at all. So now you're going to take your tape measure or your um, your graded ruler. Just measure the value of this dart and measure the value of this other dart. Here I have 1 cm and I have 1 cm here. So if I add 1 cm plus 1 cm, I have 2 cm. So I'm going to take off this 2 cm from the side seam so from this side seam here i'm working on the front side so from this side seam i just take off 2 cm i place my 2 cm here just like this and then i'm going to use my french curve to connect this to the hip line so this line here is going to be my new uh, side seam so this part we don't need it anymore so i'm just going to strike this out and then we also do not need this that because we have eliminated this the value of this that from the side seam now you're going to do exactly the same thing on the center back side now we have a dart here you're going to measure this dart to find out how much is here now I have 2 cm here and then on the center back side I have about 1 cm here so 2 cm plus 1 cm I have 3 cm so I'm going to take off 3 cm from the side seam so I'm just going to measure from the side seam inwards 3 cm and then I'm going to use my French ball to just curve it all the way down to the hip line make sure you don't go down you don't pass through your hip line so that you don't have uh, so that it doesn't affect the value of your hip so for this line we don't need this anymore so this is going to be our new side seam so now we've eliminated our uh, that okay so the next thing we're going to do now is you're going to measure the length of what you have left now the length of my skirt you're going to measure it and then you're going to divide this skirt into three equal portions so you just place your tape measure all the way down i have about 60 cm here so if i divide it into three parts i have 20 cm each now you can decide to divide yours into um, portions that are not equal. So it's really up to you. But mine, I want to divide mine into equal portions. So I'm going to measure from here now, from the hemline, I'm going to measure 20 cm. And then I just connect it all the way down like this. 
and then from this new line I'm going to measure another 20 cm and then I'm also going to connect them together So you see I have three portions already this one this one and this other one now I'm going to indicate it so that we don't get it all messed up so from this is my first portion here I'm just going to indicate it here so I'm going to already write number one and then this is my second portion or my second layer so this is number two layer number two and then this is going to be the third one and this is the third layer so whatever you do in the front, you're going to do exactly the same thing for the back side. Now the next thing we'll need to do now is we are going to create our lining pieces. Now to create that, you're going to measure, you're going to measure from, from your first line here, this is your first portion here, you're going to take it upwards about 4 cm. Now I'm going to take a different pen to indicate that. So from this line here, this is our first portion or our first layer, you're going to measure upwards 4 cm or 5 cm, it really depends on you. Okay, so this section now is going to be our lining section for the first layer. So I'm already going to mark here, this is my lining. So this is lining one and then from this second line here my second um, section or my second layer I'm also going to take it up about 4 cm so I'm also going to indicate this is this is going to be my lining section, so I'm also going to indicate it. So take note of where the lining is starting from and where it's going to end. So from this purple line to this other purple line is going to be the second lining. So this is my lining for the second and the third layer. So we only need two uh, lining sections for this skirt. For this third um, uh, layer, we do not need any lining for this. So we have our lining one and then I will have our lining two. So whatever you do for the center front, you're going to do exactly the same thing for the center back. So right now, I'm going to split this part into two so that it will be easy for us to work with. So now, in order for us not to be confused, I want us to trace out our lining portions out first before we start uh, working with the different sections. So I just place my tracing paper right on it. I'm going to trace out this first lining section and then I'm tracing out the second lining section and then I'm going to add my seam allowances to them. 1.5 cm seam allowance all around. So after tracing out our lining uh, patterns, the first one and the second one, the next thing for us to do now is to create uh, the three different layers. So we're going to create the flares for the three different layers. And to do that, we are going to uh, cut open the three different layers and then spread them. 
so first of all this is my first layer from here to this part so I'm just going to cut it open just like this and then I'm also going to cut my second layer like this so now I have uh, my three layers already so now we want to create the, create the flare for the layers so to do that we're going to divide this uh, this portion here we're going to divide it into three sections so I'm just going to divide this now into three sections you can you can just rule your slash lines or you can measure here whatever you have here you divide it into three parts it really doesn't matter so I'm just going to rule this one down And then I'm just going to rule this other line down in a straight line, just like this. Remember, this is my center front, and these are my slash lines. So I'm going to slash open my lines. And then slash open this other part as well. Okay, so... Let me set this aside. So now I'm going to get a different sheet of paper and then spread it on it. Now in order to make sure that your line is straight, I'm just going to rule a vertical line here, a, a straight line. So that this line will serve as a guide for me when I'm spreading my patterns. So now I'm going to fold on my center front line just like this. Okay, so just fold on your center front line and then place it against this your vertical line. Now, place the tip here. This is the top. This is my waistline. Place it like that. And then you're going to spread it about 5 cm. So you just place your you place your tape measure or your meter rule and measure about 5 cm. Okay, take it down a little bit. Okay, and then you use your scotch tape to hold it in place, just like this. And then you hold this one in place as well. And then you're going to spread this other part. You're going to spread it out 10 cm. You can actually spread out yours more or you can spread it out lesser than this. It depends on how much flare you want it to be. So the more you spread it, the wider your flare will be. The less you spread it, the smaller your flare will be. So it depends on how big you want your uh, flare to be. So I'm also going to spread this part out 10 cm. Okay, so once you've spread that out, you're just going to you're just going to um, to also stick this part so that it will stay very well. Okay, and then you okay.
So this is going to be our first layer. So now we are going to redraw it so that we'll have a nice curve here. Because this curve is slightly wonky, we want it to look very nice. I'm going to use this to redraw my line. So this is my curve like this and once you finish um, redrawing your curve very well you're also going to redraw your curve on the hem very well so right now I'm just going to redraw this very well So now this is going to be our very first layer. So this part is going to be our center front and this part is going to be cut on fold. The only thing we need to do to this our first layer now is to add our seam allowances. Add 1.5 cm seam allowance on the top, on the side and on the hem line just like that. But on this folded line, the center front line, you're not going to add any seam allowance because this part is going to be caught on fold. So now we're going to work on the second layer now. So for the second layer, so for the second layer, you're going to do exactly the same thing that you did for the first layer to the second layer. You just measure the top here and then you divide it into three parts. So I'm just going to divide mine now so that I can spread it, cut and spread it. And then you draw your slash line all the way down to the end. Remember, you always slash it from the bottom and not from the top because it's the bottom we want to make wider. Okay, we take a clean sheet of paper and then spread it on it. Like the first part we did, we're also going to draw a vertical line and use that line as a guide. So you're also going to measure on this side 5 cm. Remember, like I said earlier, you can spread it wider than this or you can also spread it out smaller than this. It really depends on how wide you want your flare to be.
and like we did for the uh, first layer we're also going to redraw our our curve so that it will look really nice and neat okay now this is slightly different from the first one the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add to the length of this one now you're going to add 4 cm to the length of the second layer so i'm just going to add 4 cm to the length now And then I'm going to draw this with a curve. Now another thing you can do to this one is you can also add to the side seam you can make uh, the flay a lot fuller by adding about 5 cm to the side seam. Now this is my side seam. This is the side seam here. So you, you can add 5 cm to it. It's really optional. It depends on you or you can leave it just like this. So if I add 5 cm to mine, I'm going to have it just like this. So I'm just going to rule it like this. And then I'm going to finish the curve just like this so by adding this you make it look nicer on the side and then it also flares out more so whatever you do to this second layer is exactly the same thing you would do to the third layer now on the first layer you can also decide to add 5 cm to the side seam it's optional it really depends on you Now we finished drafting patterns for the first layer, the second layer, and the third layer. Now this is only for the front side alone. Now whatever you've done for the front side, you're going to do exactly the same thing for the back side. You're going to create your lining pieces and then you're going to create your three different layers for the back side. Now once you finish doing that, you're going to place your tracing paper over all of your individual patterns. You trace them add, out and then you're going to add 1.5 cm sewing allowance all around. So I'm going to do that now and then show it to you. So I've traced out all my pattern pieces and I've labeled them. I've also added my seam allowance all around. I added 1.5 cm seam allowance all around my pattern pieces. And don't forget to add your, um, your straight grain to all pattern pieces because the straight grain will help you to know how to place your pattern pieces on your fabric when you're cutting them out. So I want to walk you through all my pattern pieces. I have 12 pieces in all. Now this is my uh, waistband the center front and the center back waistband. Now I've added my seam allowance all around, but the only part I didn't add seam allowance is the center front and the center back because this part is going to be cut on fold. It's going to be placed on the folded edge of the fabric. So for all these pattern pieces, they are all going to be cut on fold. So on the center front and on the center back, you do not need to add seam allowance. Now the only difference between the front and the back waistband is for the back waistband, I added 
2.5 cm on the side seam because I'm going to fix my skirt hook on the side seam. Now the zipper is going to be on the side seam as well because that is the easiest and the cutest place to fix your zipper for this layered skirt. Now for the other pieces, I have my lining pieces. I have four pieces for the lining. Uh, two for the front and then two for the back. So each of the pieces is going to be cut on fold. So one is the upper, this is for um, the upper lining and then this is for the lower lining. So I have two for the front and then two for the back as well. And then I have three layers for the front. So the first layer, the second layer and the third layer. I've also labeled them as well. So just try to label yours so that you don't get confused when you start uh, cutting and when you start stitching. And then for the center back, I also have three layers as well. Now all these pieces, these ones are all going to be cut on fold like I said before. So in all, we have 12 pattern pieces. So you see that's how you create patterns for a layered skirt. I hope it was simple enough for you to follow. And if you do enjoy this video, please don't forget to like and drop a comment. Let us know what you think. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel as well. Now turn on your notification bell so that whenever I post new videos, you'll be the first to know. In my next video, I'll be teaching you how to place these patterns on the fabric and then cut them out. I'll also teach in that video how to stitch these uh, skirts. So I'll see you again in my next class. Until then, bye.